welcome back to the vlog productive day already today we've uh, sourced a few things for the business but well, we're out and about but well, we're just getting a couple of drinks because we've got dry mouth we get dry mouth on the sling don't we we'll mm. get down in a minute we're getting a drink look hey but here look we're setting up a market and there's going to be a market later on this yeah. is about i don't know 15 minutes from where we are interesting to see what they sell <laughs> what are we doing? Another day, another ice cream. <laughs> Testing out all the ice creams that the locals have. Can't understand you, Mel. Hey, you have to speak Thai. Say sep le lai. Sep le lai. Sep le lai. Oh, song on you. Favorite? Looking. Copen car. Say copen car. Taste it then. Say sep la lai. Give it to Kaya. Give it to Kaya. Copen car. When the pizza spot that we were supposed to go to yesterday, well, there's a market today oh, right in front of the pizza spot. It's a very little, very quiet little spot here. And the chef here, look, he's been on TV shows. This is the place if anyone knows it. Look, there's not much left. I think he sells out quite quick. It's here, look, proper stone oven. Oh, it says every Monday there's a market. Up a cool little spot. This is the menu, look. But the price is not too bad for pizza in Thailand. 170 baht for a large, which is not bad at all. We'll see what this is like. Think of this place. It's nice. I'd say peaceful, but not when the market's on. <laughs> they got the music blazing. Let's not be copyright music. Oh look, this is the back of where we're sitting. There's a market, this is the shop. And here is the back. Looks like it's got Halloween. Look at this sketchy contraption here. I don't know if I trust this. Oh, something just fell down there. Come sit here, stare at the ghost. And look out into the pond as we sat here waiting for the pizza you know i'm just looking over the lake nice peaceful environment but i'm just thinking to myself yeah. isan's becoming a place where it's it's pretty easy to live like it's, it's livable now isan is livable and what i mean by that is you know, for example now we're sit, sat here waiting for pizza in the heart of isan you've got rice fields surrounding us lake you've got the local market there we're in the heart of isan but we can still find good pizza and there's burger shops everywhere you go you go into the town there's lots of 7-elevens big c lotuses macros i think it's becoming more and more livable now for a westerner even the markets like markets are on regularly and they do like a fair share of western food and stuff now don't they a lot of chips nuggets and stuff not that it's not the healthiest of food but if you're craving that western fix because a lot of people say they can't live in East Sam because it's too far away from that Western lifestyle. But like Nat says, it's changing now. Look, look, we've been here, what, two weeks? Just look at the amount of cafes that on the little Soleng or on a little drive in the car that we, we are able to go to. And these are like, they're catered to Western people as well. You know, they're not just like some dingy local cafe where you're never going to find it, you're never going to know what you're ordering. These are proper. Like Western cafes catered for Westerners, but they're not overpriced. They're not over. No. They're not priced for tourists. They're still used by a lot of locals, but obviously they're catered for tourists and Westerners. And it's not expensive at all. The price is not that much different. I want to. No. 
that's the that's the good thing about Isan because any business here that's expensive, you're not gonna do well. You know, it's as simple as that. Like one of the cafes that we go to, they sell food. We've been been a couple of times where they have the broccoli. They sell food, drinks, smoothies, and she makes sure that she keeps the price as low as she can um, because she knows she's in the heart of Isan in a village. Bump the price up more expensive than everyone else. She's not gonna get customers, so she's got no business. So kind of have to keep it keep it reasonably priced. Whereas in the cities, they're all there's so many stores and vendors. They're all competing against each other. They can afford to bump the price up a bit in the city as well. So generally, you spend a lot more. People are saying that Isan's got no nightlife or anything either. But we've driven past it through a few villages late at night and there's bars and there's a lot of white people, well western people sat in these bars at night, not even just drinking, like having a good time, they've all got like different countries flags up and stuff, so it's not just local bars is it, like there is some nightlife, if that's what you're into. There's a couple bars just near our little town, which are western bars or you know, it's where the foreigners, they generally they congregate and have a drink there. But then you know, show football, now, now the Euros is on, they, they, they've got screens and things and you can order Western food, pizzas, burgers, pastas, things like that, steak. But yeah, there's a lot that's more and more catered towards tourists. Whereas 20 years ago, I wouldn't say it was livable for, for a Westerner. Well, water didn't even come from a tap back then, did it? <laughs> you were down the well yourself getting water, never mind turning on a tap. My, my village to this day is very poor in comparison to all the rest of the villages here and we still don't have a proper shop in, in the village but we didn't have a running running tap for ages we were a lot behind in comparison but some of these villages now very advanced you, you drive past and you see some houses it's like whoa someone's got money they've got big heavy machinery farming equipment like that, that, that costs a lot of money you know what i mean so they must be making a lot of money as well so. They've got Western partners either because we've spoken to a few, haven't we? Mm. They've got no Western influence, but they're doing well for themselves. So fair play to them. They're doing something right. In comparison to 20 years ago, like when I when I was a kid here, I I wouldn't say Isam was livable for a Westerner, but now I think it's very livable. You know? I think if you if you can deal with like basic living and the basic lifestyle, and you won't get bored out here. What is what? What is there that you would need out here? You've got, you got malls, you've got your big C, 7-Eleven, you've got your supermarkets, and then you've got like lovely restaurants like this, where you can just come, get a pizza, lovely atmosphere, no one bothers you. Everyone just cracks on, everyone's really nice out here. Even when people do bother you, everyone's so friendly, it's not like you're isolated and people won't speak to you. Uh, you can integrate, speak to people, you won't get lonely. I wouldn't get lonely. Isan, is livable in 2024 for a Westerner. What? Maybe too livable. I keep seeing, I keep seeing too many foreigners dotting about the place. On one hand, I like it because I, I kind of like bumping into like foreigners. Hey, like, what's up, Doc? You know what I mean? We all know why they're here. You know what I mean? They're, they're here with the Thai misses, most of them. So, you know, I, I don't mind it. You do what you want. You know, you, you, you come, you, you come live. As long as you integrate yourself in the community, in the society here support the local businesses, more than welcome. Seem to be more and more. <laughs> Maybe Isan in another 20 years will be completely different. Well, if they plan on doing this railway from Bangkok, like they're saying, mm. it could be very, very different in 20 years. We'll see, won't we? Hopefully by then you'll have one of these big mansions that we keep driving <laughs> past. Again, Isan is livable in 2024. When we found this place the other day, you know, we just found it on Google Maps. We didn't think nothing of it. I mean, you come and you ran out and said, oh, it'll come back another day. But now we sat down like we just realized he's, he's been on TV a few times. Quite a few yeah. Times. Got pictures of him on TV. So I don't know if he's like some sort of famous chef out here or has it been on chefing shows? You know, like how Ramsey has his kitchen nightmare. What's the show called? Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. And Master Chef, I think. Like yeah, that. Master Chef. It's like the Thai equivalent he's been on. And I think he's cooked for some famous people. I don't like it. You don't like it? He's not even here yet, you liar. So, high hopes for this pizza now. 
Usually, you know, pizza in Thailand, it's like sometimes it's a little bit too sweet. Is it chocolate? No, it's pizza. We're getting pizza. And yes, we're getting Hawaiian. Pineapple does belong on pizza. Yeah. So. Huh? Are you dancing to the music? How you dance? How you dance? No. No, okay. Yeah. Leave it in the comments if you think pineapple belongs on pizza. Because I do, I think it tastes delicious. Unless you're Italian, your opinions are invalid anyway. But leave, leave in the comments. What do you think? I love pineapple pizza. I like veggies on pizza. I, have, like, I would rather have just like peppers, oh, sweet corn, pineapple, tomato, onions, chilies. Mm -hmm. Veggie for me. I'll tell you what should be banned though. Anchovies. Yeah, yeah. Whoever put anchovies on pizzas should be beheaded. That's more of a crime than pineapple any day. Mm. This is crazy. It's spicy, I don't think it's spicy. We didn't order a spicy one today. Mm. What are you doing? Cuddling. Giving daddy cuddle. Giving daddy cuddle. Cut, 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 cut. That's nice. You're not forced, are you? You're you not know. forced to cuddle daddy. You're giving daddy a squish. <laughs> Give daddy a kiss. Mm. Good kiss. Did he get a kiss on the cheek? Daddy get a kiss? Is that party bus? <laughs> no, that's just a big truck. It goes beep, 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 beep. Another one? That one's a bit more respectful, is it? <laughs> Didn't have to beep his own, did he? Did he kiss then? Did he kiss? Mm -hmm. Here's the food. Wow, look at this. Wow. Can you excited. What is it, Kaya? Pizza. Pizza. What have we got, Mallory? Are we having pizza? Pizza party! Oh, yeah. Excited! Looks like a proper pizza that, doesn't it? In a pizza oven and everything like it should be done. Look at the colour on that. Look, the, yeah, that looks good. Char, char grilled. Cheese today. That was graceful. Oh, that's bomb, man. Is it? Mm. I have rice on. I have rice on. This one, man. Take a big bite. It's still hot, isn't it? Let it cool down a little bit. Yeah, let it cool down. Break it in bits. Mm. Nice, isn't it? But the price is on. Mm. 179 for a large pizza in Thailand. For a proper large pizza. Proper pizza. Very good. And the pineapple is juicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm actually so impressed with this. Mm. I'm glad we came back. And look at the scenery though. This ain't bad either. It's relaxing. Of course, you, you got the thumping music at the market behind, but any other day apart from Monday. Adds to the aesthetic, doesn't mm. it? Makes you feel like you're in Thailand even though you're eating pizza. And then dance. <laughs> Bit stiff, is it? Hey, Kaya, you dance. Kaya, dance. Say this might be my favorite pizza I've had in Thailand, and that, that's saying something. Mm, mm, mm. It's the bread for me, I don't know what it is. It's the char grilled mm, mm, bread. Mm, mm, I said it's almost like a pita, it's really nice. Mm, but the flavor is nice, not mm. usually in Thailand, the pizza is too sweet. I know we've had pineapple, but. but they usually smother it in like four different sauces yeah. and stuff. But this is like the jet tomato sauce. Mm. Jet cheese, usually it's plastic like cheese, isn't it? Yeah. It's going down well. You've mm. only got a couple. Kaya's almost finished. Me and Mal still going with these two, but we're pretty much there. Is that yummy pizza, Kaya? It's a doggy. It's a doggy. Mm. I highly recommend this place because you can't find it on Google because it's it's all written in Thai. It's Thai pizza. It won't come up. But like I said, he's a. Um, it's a doggy. High level chef, been on telly, but he's just out here in the village. Like, I feel like you can get so many more customers if you just cater it more towards Westerners, you know, name it pizza something mm. and have it on Google, Google Maps. And he's such a nice person, mm. isn't he? He's so sweet. And, and show his accolades because when I, when I was looking, it just looked like, you know, I've just seen pictures of pizza and it's, just, it's a nice little spot. But I didn't realise accolades that he had out here. So if he just put that on Google, and just show himself off a bit more. I think I feel like more people will come here. He definitely deserves the recognition, that's mm. for sure. But maybe I'll do that for him. I'll leave a link in the description. 
I know I might write a Google review, my first ever one. Yeah. <laughs>